Uh, welcome to the race five both. Uh, we don't have too much concrete uh, agenda today, but yeah, <laughs> only few things I have put in the side. I mean, I will uh, spend a few time to, dis to show you what's new in the trunk compared to the latest GCC release in for the race five. Uh, for what we have now on trunk is we have better concerns synthesis which is, is con mostly contributed by Jeff Rowe. He has a lot of interesting ma magic around the constant stuff. And uh, also, we have more mature backlighter support. Also has support our early acid loop. Of course, we only put in the backend stuffs only. I mean, I remember the backlighter part is done by is I'm for, I, I read for the name, <laughs> but anyway. Wait, come on. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. But anyway, we, we bridge the, the, we added the missing part in the backend, so it's work for Resafi as well, yeah. And also, we have uh, Intel friends to add in bunch of situation operation support, uh, who is uh, Li Pan. Uh, he is working on adding bunch of uh, middle-end stuff and also the backend support. So in case you, if, if you are not working for Resify, but you can still benefit from that by adding some more pattern in your backend. Yeah. And also this year we have trying to add in more security stuff in the Resify backend. One most important thing already in the in the trunk is the stake state crash protection support, which is contributed by the uh, Bentana folks. And uh, another thing is the uh, uh, B-Flutter 16 support. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically we are trying to learn from x86. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a lot of improvement for Artilite uh, DBS extension. Okay, so what's the plan? I mean, what's the thing we plan to do it to include it in the GC14, uh, 15, but not uh, included it. The first one is the Huawei CFI support. Uh, I have a talk uh, for this in tomorrow's afternoon. So in case you are interested for that, uh, welcome to join my talk. Yeah. And uh, another one important bit for the research file is uh, function multiversion. Uh, in the last year, we have the taggy attribute. Uh, it's kind of fundamental thing for the function multi version, but yeah, I, we do, didn't did anything around the real multi version yet. Now we are working from the taggy Chrome in the taggy version, which is uh, should be same behavior in the definition in the ARGC64. I mean. I remember they have supported both as well. And uh, Resify, we will support both, yeah. And also another interesting bit is the fixed length spectral coin convention. Uh, in this year, we have a scalable vector uh, coin convention already there. And this year, we will uh, fill in the gap for the fixed length specter since we realize one thing is uh, fixed length specter still kind of popular in this world. So we must have some coin convention to improve the efficiency of the passing argument for the fixed length specter. And that's what we're supposed to implement in the next GC release. And of course, there are a bunch of the cogen improvements for vector plan on, on, ongoing, which we are based on the banana pie. Uh, let's uh, only, uh, let's uh, form kind of most easier assets in the world, I believe. You can just buy from the network and get one. It has support for vector one, although and Sapphire, and it's not Sapphire CPU, but I still will recommend you to get one if you, would like to play something with the Resify vector, yeah. And uh, also, there are some sub items around. Here is some extra uh, situation handling and the zero stride loss store <laughs> and the segment uh, tracing mode and the some missile vector handling stuff, yeah. 
And the uh, next one is kind of new stuff, uh, which is pop up recently. Uh, the shortcut setting, circuit setting. I mean, we, I forgot the why we set into false before, but anyway, we will re evaluate that soon. I, uh, I, I assume Jeff, you will do that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. The, the short circuit setting. So where are we? Short circuit. Sure, no, this is actually Palmer's patch. Um, I go to do that for the one that I'll just like to take a mic. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's actually your patch, Palmer. Um, I've got it to do to actually run that on design. The, the thinking is, when I looked at, at this class of problems about, uh, about a year, year and a half ago, the general conclusion we had come to was we don't want to be crazy aggressive on the, the front end going into GIMPL, but we want to be very aggressive on the back end if conversion. Um, what your patch does is defaults back to the standard way we evaluate uh, the, the short circuit and stuff. And I think conceptually it's the right thing to do. We just need to test it on design. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sure we'll get that sorted out in the next you know, week, two weeks, whenever. Yeah, it's a one-liner. It's the testing that takes time. <laughs> yeah. Did you want me to talk about any of the other ones? Sorry. Since I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Jeff, I assume that next one is also added by you. Uh, yeah, I think I put most of this in here. Um, <laughs> so on the code gen improvements, probably the, the biggest takeaway from that is now that there's some hardware out there, um, and now that with Inventana, we're running a lot of this vector code on design, um, we are finding a lot of um, quirks both in our design and in the, these uh, initial boards that are out there. So we know that, for example, VXRM is in a simple implementation will be a pipeline flush, which you can assume will be very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and that shows up anytime you want to use those uh, uh, half word averages. So like a pixel average in X264. Um, zero strike load versus a vector splat, that shows up in uh, MC weights. Is that right, Robin? Um, <laughs> Segmenting addressing tunable, that was one that you were looking at. Uh, shows up on the banana pie. I think it's just bad performance, if I write. Yeah. And then misaligned vector handling. And, and if I get it wrong, Robin, please correct me. But one of the things we're seeing um, with X, X264's SAD loop is to get enough elements handled per vector op and to get the re only do one uh, reducing, reducing sum you actually have to expose unaligned vector handling to the vectorizer. That allows you to unroll both loops and you get really nice performant code. So we've kind of figured out SAD. We have not figured out SATD yet. That's uh, Rob and I are going to be living inside of that probably for the next couple of months. Um, and the last one, this is one of Robin's patches, if conversion, I think it's kind of pending on a discussion between maybe you, Richie, Richard Sandiford, and Robin to get sorted out. I actually have a question to the to the banana p evaluation. Um, I've, I'm, I'm as I'm working on the using SLP for everything. Uh, I run into the situation that currently we decide to use the I think it's called struct load and struct store on Risk Five, which is load lanes and uh, store lanes on ARM. Right? Yeah. It's just called different. Uh, that that the ARM vectorization relies almost entirely on the struct load and struct store. But in theory, it can also use the, the v, v, v gather with the, the uh, uh, register, register gather, or also, I think for some interleaving, you could use the compress mm -hmm. thing. So did you see if like the, is, is, is that struct store of like eight vectors fast? I mean, it, it must be pretty awkward to implement that in a fast way. Yeah, it's not faster, you know. <laughs> so, so is it faster to load continuous memory and do a lot of gathers? We're, we're still trying to figure all that out. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I think this is one of the, I guess Jeff was kind of pointing this somewhere up here, but Riscoid Vector Extension has a lot of fancy things in it, mm -hmm. and the hardware does not go fast for all the fancy things. So I think we're starting to find that now. So when I look at the, the, the specification, my takeaway is 
that it has a lot of fancy things, but it lacks very basic things, and you have to use the fancy things. The problem is that, um, the, the, this is really the core of the problem, is that the fancy things are there, and so they removed the simple things, and re this is a common RISC-5 idiom, is to remove the simple way of doing something and instead replace it with you know some sort of idiomatic code sequence of fancy things. And that's kind of just hard for everybody, if that makes sense, because you know you, you try to filter it down to the simple version of the thing, right? And, but the ISA sort of loses that information, right? And then the hardware guys have to recover it in slightly different ways. And we're seeing that across the board in vector land. So uh, how does it, it work when, when the hardware designer immense, implements the vector vector gather? Does it at, at somewhere in the pipeline detect, oh, that's just an interleave and go uh, a different path than the very generic end-to-end -end mapping? Does it do that? That's the kind of thing we're actually discussing with hardware guys. I mean, you're doing hardware. <laughs> Are you doing this kind of stuff, or you have just fast generic permute thing? That's what we're testing right now, trying to figure out what is going to be performed. And but, but no, no. But, but the vectorizer needs to know yeah. what you're going to implement, and not the other way around. Yeah, and we have not done any of that kind of modeling. No, okay. we're, we're still very early days because we are just understanding how the vector designs perform yeah. in practice. Like if we can look at code, it looks fantastically fast. But when you run it on design, you find out that there's a quirk. There's always a quirk. Yeah. So like right now, if you run vectorized code, like you run vectorized code like on spec or whatever on the actual hardware, the vectorized code will probably be slower than the scalar code because there are just enough performance quirks in any design that haven't been worked around that it's just not going to be a win. It's a bit of a bummer. Right. Yeah. On the VR gather stuff, we're starting to see some more common idioms get added as instructions, right? Like they've got zips and compress and stuff, just yeah. got fast tracked a couple of days ago, I think. Hopefully going to be a transpose coming soon. Yeah, right. So I think what we're starting to see is this general pattern of like not putting any of the simple stuff in the ISA is just going to get worked around by adding a bunch more extensions, you know, I guess. And then we'll have a generation or two of hardware where you shim those through the generic flavors of the things, right? Kind of like the splat, right? The, the zero index load splat idiom, right? Where basically you, know, you use a, a, a zero offset into your index load to splat something, right? Like that, that is an idiom that kind of is a little clunky for hardware folks because it's through memory and whatnot, right? So, um, you know, you start to see these like patterns that end up being a little more complicated if you rely on pattern matching the generic version of stuff, and they're just starting to go in as extensions. So my guess is that the first generation or two of hardware, we're going to have super quirky performance models for all these things. Not so much on the like pipeline model scheduling side of things, because scheduling really doesn't matter in these newer cores. Right? For the in-order ones, it might, but for the out-of-order ones, it really doesn't anymore. Right? But just on the cost of doing an instruction sort of thing. Right? You know, is there a big, la uh, big latency because you microcoded it or dropped down to some firmware mode? Well, that happens with the ball. What happens with the second middle or That's the other stuff. Is that, yeah. So to, to put this in perspective for you, Richie, um, Byte, Byte Dance was looking at just like a transpose, a two by two transpose, and they've come up with, a, I think, five implementations. Um, but yet they don't have any they've run on, on hardware yet. So they don't know how any of them perform. They're, they're looking at instruction counts. And their first proposal to me was do it in memory. I said, no. <laughs> Not only is it bad in memory, it was going to be partial vector stores and partial vector loads, so you're going to get store to forward, store forward bypass problems. Do it all in register. Um, th there's a lot of quirks that we're finding, and that, that's just the nature of first-gen vector hardware. Yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty clear on the vector side that like we're very early in terms of people actually implementing the ISA, and we're in the longer run going to see a different way of doing things. Now that people are seeing codes, now that we can take a code fragment and say, this is what the idiom looks like in code gen, I can now give that to the hardware team and say, is this performant, given you know, the, your expectations of this particular microarchitecture? If they go back and say, oh, yeah, this is dumb, we're doing something stupid, they go off and they fix, they fix it. Some of the things are like, yeah, this is not going to get fixed right now. That's just the nature of first-gen vector hardware. I think broader, more broadly speaking, RISC-V as an ISA really isn't, if you want to do a performance design, it's really not risk like an ARM type risk where you have one 
op at a time. RISC-V is really way more like a variable length Cisc ISA that is described as a series of RISC-like fragments. And a lot of the ISA is designed around detecting multi, like pat common patterns of multi-instruction sequences and merging them together some way in the hardware that stuff goes faster. That makes sense. And if you look at like the vector stuff, a lot of it really is like a 64-bit instruction encoding that's been split in half with the, there's a configuration instruction and an op instruction. And the configuration instruction gets really complicated. Jeff mentioned LMOL, right? There's a LMOL flavor that will like cause you to read and write the entire state of the machine in every cycle, for, for example, right? So like you get super weird at a certain point and a lot of the people who are not risk by processor designers, people who came from Armland, saw it and said, hey, this is risk guy, so I'm just going to one instruction at a time implement them, right, without so many canonical sequences and whatnot. And that just leads to bad performance. So as of the ISA, I, it's probably that, that we have to wait one or two hardware iterations before people think about doing LVV 2.0. Or, or maybe it's then just another extension on top of. Yeah. Ratified saying something like, "This is not going to change until 2.0." So I think maybe they want that one to start. <laughs> it's a particular sticking yeah. point. So <laughs> in wait, it, 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 it was, I feel the law is still kind of changing to the 1.0 is already yeah, yeah, not just like in change. Yeah. Have numbers, so. yeah. So it's a whole can kind of works over there. But yeah. No, I think what's going to happen is that. There's going to be the base vector stuff. And unfortunately, the base vector stuff has a ton of complicated stuff in it, which is frustrating for hardware people. Because if you start to add the common patterns as instructions, then you still have complicated patterns. What do you do, like microcode them or something? That's also complicated for some people because they can't make use of these complicated And this is patterns. the problem. Is, and, and this is what I was talking about. Is like it's kind of hard for both sides because like you know you don't get a clean description of what's fast. Instead, you have these canonical sequences of instructions that are fast, but the canonical sequence is a little different between everybody's hard work, right? You know, mm -hmm. What exact flavors of things do you detect? So it starts to get to be this really mushy kind of meta ISO where like, yeah, you've got all these instructions, but you can't use them. You can only use these certain flavors of instructions and really like flavors of multi-instruction sequences. When you start to get something like a, you know, the VR gather, the generalized VR gather, right? Yeah, if you, if you don't implement the generalized VR gather fast, then you've got a have the hardware pattern matching certain like flavors of constants to go into the register, right? And then the constant generation sequences are super long because we can't index individual register bits, right? Because they don't want any VLA stuff in the ISO, right? So it starts to get super complicated of like what exactly is fast. Yeah, if that makes sense. And, and it wasn't until very recently, it was until recently that the software teams are giving the hardware teams code and saying, this is what needs to run fast. That, that has really started yeah. the last few months. I think if you look at like, uh, I moan about the ice hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it feels like all the time when CPU people design something and not talk to the compiler guys before they design something. Uh, because uh, I, 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 I always yeah. believed yeah. they would have a vector interleaf instruction because I mean, that's perfect for a variable length ISA. And they have it. It's just called GADA, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've worked on, on ISAs that had these you know, highly generic gathers. Um, but what we found was building some specialized ones was really useful. Because <laughs> we, we found that the, the complex stuff we didn't need very often. Really, you know, zip, unzip, two by two transpose. You get the basics right. And the rest just doesn't matter. And like everybody else has the same set of common ones. Oh. Yeah, everybody else has the same set of common ones for a reason, right? You know, they're just kind of what <laughs> workloads do and what software people expect to have. So I'm sure we'll end up with them too. It's just going to take a while. We're almost like this first generation of hardware is almost really like a generation earlier than you would expect from most. Yeah. Shops like an Intel or ARM type shop because like the compiler guys and the hardware guys were at completely different companies and not only couldn't they didn't they talk to each other they couldn't even talk to each other right hardware guys will never tell you what they're going to do and they all think they're 
doing the fastest stuff, right? So like, uh, I think this first generation is just going to be total chaos. And because it's only been, what, six months or something since we basically had spec, you know, not icing all the time, right? Maybe nine months, something like that, right? Um, so at that point, like, we're still really early on the vector side of things. And the hardware you see coming out right now would have been designed before spec would even built. So it was just totally open loop design. And if it takes, you know, two or three years for the hardware cycle to really close, you know, because even if you're doing a chip every year, it's not like you have a full new design of your IP every year, right? So it's at least a year if you do stuff real fast and it's a little change and then more like two or three if you're doing bigger changes. And a lot of these like more generic like structural changes in the design are way bigger. Right? So I think we're going to see, we're going to have a few years of just totally wacky performance models before stuff generally starts to converge. And a lot of that's going to be new instructions and whatnot. And what that probably argues, oh, go ahead and take it up there, I'll just mention it. What that probably argues is that the scooting and, and other stuff we put in now, we can wait a few years because it's going to be hard for the yeah. money apps. And this is something that's like, should we even just have like a, you know, Tune 2024 or whatever year it is type thing in there, right? Yeah, because then, I don't know what we do. It's the same argument we had with the them tune generic while we ended up with generic OOO because we didn't want to change generic because it was still aimed at the things that don't support misaligned scalar accesses, right? So it's kind of like, are we stuck with the flavor of tuning that we have now? Even if all that hardware is just, that's the thing, right? Like, but. Then somebody says, no, no, I've you know, still got my PDP or whatever, and you know, you're stuck with it, right? So that's kind of, you know, I, I don't know quite what to do there, right? But I think this first generation of hardware is just going to have a totally chaotic performance model. And it's just going to be, like, I'm not even sure if we're going to have reasonable code gen if we try to target stuff that's not slow on any system. That makes sense? Just because this is going to be so fragmented, I don't really know what we're going to well, do. Well, if you stick with simple loads or simple ops. But the problem is that we don't have. That, and we don't have the simple ops, right? Because they, we only have the complex ops. So if like, everybody has a slightly different flavor of the complex op that's fast, and there's no simple op to back it up, what do we do? Like, literally, only whole register loads and stores and mass plus ops? The code gen's going to be horrific, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Then you end up with power PC. <laughs> right, just assume it's once when well, I think they only have one implementation, though. No. <laughs> one existing. Really? I mean, yeah. And this is kind of the problem. Does this devolve into, you know, like basically just some ancient Symbi thing where we just end up with 128 bit code gen and no masks? And that's what we get for a little while. I don't know. It seems backwards. But. Is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have another question. Is what's the extra plan to implement the target clone? Uh, since now RESC5 is leak of the target can in a uh, point, uh, we, we can't deal the actually the in a function with target clone uh, to make sure that a caller is. Uh, Actually, devised by a colleague. Uh, so, uh, how, how do we deal with this? I don't think people are going to be running generic vector binaries for a while. I just don't think there's going to be that level of compatibility because vector is really a performance thing. And it's not like it's a factor of 100 or whatever, right? It's you know, integer factors on these big designs. So I think you're just going to see the vector code gen that people use just built for whatever CPU they're trying to run. It's some embedded thing. And the distros maybe have, you know, F of MPEG and OpenSSL have their hooks or something. But I don't think the generic stuff's going to go in there. That's me, though. So. Yeah, OK. <laughs> I don't think I've got anything else to say there. <laughs> yeah, I, I would expect the distros are going to pick something. They're going to generate code for it. But they're not going to dive into the details yeah. of how, the, how it performs. Um, yeah. That's just reality. And the, the you know, if, if I was building a distro, I would try to figure out where the market is going as opposed to targeting what's out there today. Because again, what's out there today is just weird. Yeah, I never see that. It's kind of like any other time there's new hardware floating around, right? You know, it's going to be a ton of people doing it. A couple of those designs are going to, you know, win somewhere and survive for a while. And that's what people are going to pay attention to when everything else is just going to eventually be ignored. I think we're just still at the point right now in our sky blend where it's getting bigger and uh, we just don't really know where it's going to end up.
So Richard, don't waste any time on the vectorizer for this part. I, I, that's not a bad place to be. <laughs> well, no, because I, I would rather you, you know, you, the, the work you're doing, I think, is critically important. And I wouldn't want like a RISC V scan as and test to get in your way because some of those are just poorly written. Yeah. Plain and simple. So if, if you're, you're finding those, go ahead and go forward, pull forward, and we'll, we'll deal with the fallout. <laughs> Yeah, I think a vast majority of our scan ASM tests that are sort of just trying to, you know, match, because if you look at them, they're pretty clunky and they usually just match like big chunks of code that came out of the thing to make sure it's exactly the same. Like, but it, it, it's just not sane to expect those to last forever. We need to have written better tests. That makes sense. There's a general problem with scan ASM tests that they often don't state what they want to test. It would make a lot more sense if uh, there was a comment that a particular optimization should be happening and then the scan for that. And then when you see it fails, then you can check if something similar is being done or something better. Yeah, that's a lot of the tests. I don't care. Is this for the television? Or? A lot of the tests don't even tell you what they're trying to look for. It's just a big blob of code that somebody said, this is what it generated last year. Um, without any thought as to how that code might change or what it really should be, or even testing things in the sequence that just don't matter. Um, and, and that's something we're just going to have to keep cleaning up. I, I know that uh, Pam Lee just did a number of cleanups in the saturation test for that, and I expect we'll have a lot of that kind of stuff happening uh, over the coming months. But that's just code hygiene in general. And being a small port that not a lot of people have worked on, we have a lot of clunky stuff, not just in the tests, right? So. Get through it. Right. Other questions? Yeah, I Okay. And uh, we have a few more items, but I guess it's just by Jeff. Yeah, and may maybe you guys can actually answer this for me because I added this. Um, I had looked briefly at uh, the way we do branch shortening, and it looks like we're dependent almost entirely on the assembler to, to deal with the compression. Stop relying on the assembler to do anything smart. That makes sense, <laughs> right? It just leads to weird code gen. We should add some M, just give me the instructions flag. We have some like that M, no aliases type things, mm -hmm. right? But an M, don't mess with my code, just assemble the instruction I wrote, type flag, and then do the benchmarking to make sure we don't drop anything and, you know, handle compression and, you know, because because the assembler expands out the instructions, like makes single instructions, two instructions all the time, right? Uh, you know, we should handle compression in the compiler and just stop. It, it, like, all we're doing is just papering over cost model books, basically. Yep. Right. That, that's what I found. And I was, um, yeah. I'll say I was disappointed when I found it. Yeah. And, and what I thought I saw was the compiler um, GCC would always assume everything is a full size instruction. And the branch limitations are such that we're generating long branches in the compiler much more often than we should. It's so, a, but it's all over. It's not just this one problem. It is a it, it's a class, class of problems. Problem yes, have. and we actually did this early on in the design to make it way easier to change the ISA, like do ISA design, when there were just two or three people working on this thing. The idea was that we would just build a compiler binary. It's building GCCs. Too hard, right? So <laughs> we build a compiler binary, and then no one would have to touch it, and we could, you know, uh, do our uh, drag racing for you know glibc code size or whatever based on just touching the assembler, which is convenient, but you know, we don't live in that world anymore. <laughs> the, the other thing we need to do here, um, we added long call sequences um, and long branch sequences six months ago, nine months ago, whatever it was. Um, for big enough functions, those sequences will trash your return address predictors. That needs to be fixed. Okay. Um, it's, it's not the top of my list, but it is something our hardware guys have said, yeah, we, we'd like to see that fixed. And I agree with them. It's, it's the right thing to do. The good thing is um, we could do a register scavenger and fall back to uh, the, these sequences that potentially trash your wrap. Yeah. But if, I would expect scavenging to work 90-something percent of the time. And so if it does, that's sufficient in my book. Yeah. 
I guess maybe we'll throw a missed optimization or whatever bug or lull and yeah. just talk about it over there. But that kind of stuff, like, I, there's all sorts of things when you start to actually look at the code gen where it's bad. We have a bunch of the stuff that's hidden by uh, whatever the implicit, explicit relux stuff that's similar, right, where you don't get, you know, shared registers behind your multi-instruction sequences and whatnot. So, yeah. So that was all I had on those two. Go ahead and move forward. I'm not sure what else, I'm not sure what else I put in there. <laughs> I haven't looked at them, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Hello? Wait. That, that's all I have for that slide. Okay. Yeah, you probably know some. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the vector. Oh, yeah, it's very general. you, right? I, this is just a, this is almost actually an advert for my lightning talk in a couple of hours' time. Um, I just thought I think just as part of the boff, we throw in a few things. We've got mbench 2.0 in final release candidate, and now there will be a paper coming out later in the year with everyone who's been involved in this. And I thought I'll just put up a couple of slides here. One is to look and you know, just understand that we can see the benefits of different. Um, uh, extensions there. Um, first of all, obviously, putting a multiplier in um, helps things go faster. Compressed, the compressed instructions don't particularly slow things down. And I've put a couple of the core five uh, extensions on there, and they also show the benefit of extensions. Do you want to go on to the other one? This is probably more interesting. I've just looked at the history. I've gone back to 2017, which is the first time Risk Five was properly upstream. And I've compared the performance of the different releases over time. Um, on mBench, and of course, this is aimed at the very smallest microcontrollers. This is little 30, tiny little 32-bit, maximum 64 uh, uh, kilobytes. The mBench 2.0's got one or two slightly bigger kernels in them before. There's um, a tiny AI kernel in there, for example. Um, what we can see there that is over the last seven years, RISC V is slowly converging on AI, both in performance and code size, but it's not yet caught up with um, uh, ARM. This is ARM Cortex M4, no floating point unit. Okay. I forgot one more slide, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I just show we do do big stuff as well. Um, this is, and this sort of speaks to what Jeff was talking. Up until fairly recently, the only way we've been able to look at optimization for vector is doing instruction counting. Um, and this is just showing, you know, impact of vector uh, code generation on spec CPU 2017. What you find is that vectors mostly aren't making a big difference, at least to instruction counts. There might be some performance improvement when we get real hardware, except for one or two things. So X264, where you get half the number of instructions generated as out of these Allen C benchmark, um, where you get a fairly chunky improvement. Um, and actually, in terms of instruction count, vectors actually makes one or two instructions worth. I think that's all I've got there. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got a lightning talk where I've got rather more detail on performance measurements we've done on other, other things. Can on your slide? So um, let, let, let's look at that six, uh, X264 case. That's about half the instruction count, give or take a little bit. Um, with naive code gen, that probably performs about twice as, twice as bad as the scalar version. <laughs> Um, so that, that gives you a sense of what we're dealing with here. We cut the instruction count in half and it goes twice as slow. <laughs> yeah, um, and in fact, on that little banana pie, um, the, the, the way I choose to think about it based on experience is the more we vectorize, the slower it gets. <laughs> so it, it's a terrible microarchitecture, but. Thank you. So for, for, for X264, it's the experience, the wider vectors you have, the, the slower it gets. Yeah, so it's it, 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 it is it, it is yeah it's it's a very quirky benchmark for the vectorization yeah. and I and, and and even so for variable length I would guess it's a much harder variable length but you really just want 128 bit wide Cindy yeah that's what all really good, that that's perfect <laughs> anyway I just want to make that comment that while he did the, the I cast the three performance in each reference. Yeah, it, 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 it was an interim proxy until we got anything better. And quite honestly, most of the work was on getting things functionally correct. This is a month or two old, and you'll notice that though there are 20 benchmarks in that particular suite, I've only got 15 sets of figures because I couldn't get five of them to work on QEMU. Okay, I don't have anything to say. I don't know why Jerry gave the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> 
questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, there's kind of big problem, big issue around the uh, GCC and the Binyoto recently. I mean, uh, Research Foundation has proposed one thing called the profile, and uh, we are intended to support that since the client has supported it, but uh, recently Palmer has some interesting idea around maybe we can have maintain to another GNU profile? Yeah, so the problem with profiles is that they're, the profile is a list of extensions and it says you must support these extensions. But if hardware doesn't support the extensions, they can still just claim that they're compatible with the profile. So wait, 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 you're not talking about profiling, right? No, 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 no. no it's yeah. different, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry for the confusion. <laughs> it's the same as x86 v123, um, except that if you claim x86 v3 or risk v 5 v23 or whatever it is, right, uh, you just don't actually have to implement that stuff, which is pointless. Yeah, it's just, but it's just risk v, right? Like it's chaos, right? So my argument is basically that my original argument was basically that we should remove the extensions that are not actually in the hardware from the profile. Yes, yeah, so this is for RVA22, which doesn't support misaligned accesses, and the profile says it does, right? Um, or it doesn't support it on all of the chips that exist, right? I forget if there's any other issues in there. That's just the one I happen to remember, right? Um, uh, but then I thought, okay, uh, why? It's not really our problem in compiler land, right? If the user says, I'm running on this design that supports misaligned accesses, then they'll get code that supports it or whatever the extension is, they're saying, I, support, I want code that supports this side of extensions. Just generate the code, it'll crash, but that's not really our problem. We did what the user asked for, so whatever. And that's what the LLVM guys have done as well. That's what kind of changed my mind, is that they're basically saying, well, that's not our problem. If you know, we generated the code you asked for, if the sticker on your chip says it supports that thing and it doesn't actually support the thing, the bug's in the sticker, it's not the software. So. I say, let's just go merge 22, flip on everything that's in there, and then break users. And the faster we break users, the faster they'll go complain, and then hopefully it'll get fixed. Where we are now, we've been forever just papering over all these issues in the you know, lack of any actual compliance. And then the folks at the Sky Foundation say, oh yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Right? Uh, whereas we just kind of disable all these random instructions that don't actually exist in the design when ISA says they do. I think we're just digging ourselves a hole. So, uh, I'm a bit confused. So are you talking about defining profiles? Or uh, I think I, when, when reading through RISC-V stuff on the web, I found there are some there are, yeah, is something defined. like profiles, right? So they're defined by the risc Foundation. Ah, OK. Yeah. okay. Now, they defined 22. Cool fully defined, ratified, and whatever. But then they said something like it's a minor release and software shouldn't use it. So we have kind of this gray area there. This happens a lot with the Risk-V Foundation where they say something and then they kind of back off for it once they find bugs. Right? It's the same where they say nothing's ever been removed from the ISA. And then they're like, ah, oh, no, nothing was removed from the ISA since we moved to Switzerland. And it's like, sure, right? That kind of stuff, right? So it's the same with 22, where we ran into these issues, and they're like, okay, it's a minor release, don't use it, basically. Right? So that's why we kept it out, under the assumption that it was just going to cause chaos. But this is the post on the mailing list that blew up. It's like, I think RVA 23 is going to be exactly the same. I don't think there's any actual change going on. I don't think there's actually any you know, compliance getting enforced. So we might as well just break users today, rather than waiting for another release, and then waiting for hardware to come out, and we'll just do the same thing in a year or two, or whatever it is. Well, without, without compliance, Without compliance testing, this is going to repeat. That's kind of my point. That's, that's the key like, issue. There's no compliance testing. The vendors, they call it vendor self-certification, which basically means that the vendors decide whether or not they implement the stuff, which is, of course, the vendor always says, yeah, so we implement it. So one, one guiding principle about that topic may be that the, the, the profiles, so to speak, for x 64 were created by the distributors. And Simply. That's, that's exactly where I think this needs to go. Yeah, exactly. So, so if, if if you have basically, I, I understand that the set of profile currently existing for Risk Five is basically an, an agreement that decided yeah. on those profiles and then backtrack for real world yeah. reasons, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's never going to work in the end. And this so. is my argument: is that we should just come up with profiles and call them GNU twenty twenty four 
whatever, I don't really care what they're called, but we should just decide on something that says, here is what the, because these are only really useful for binary compatible distros, you know, Red Hat yeah, and exactly. canonical type folks, right? So, you know, uh, if you're not in that world, you don't care, SBCs and stuff don't really matter. So let's just say, here are all the chips you might care about running those sort of things on that got released in 2024, and here's the extensions they support, and you pass GNU 24 or whatever, and you get stuff that runs on those, as opposed to getting stuff that runs on kind of nothing, I guess, I, I don't know. But it does feel like it's a distro, that this, I guess it's a distro space. I agree it's a distro problem. The, I, the profiles have always been a distro but, problem in a distro. So, so at this very moment, uh, how many designs are there out in the world that can run a Linux distro? So not the small embedded ones, but the big well, ones. Is, 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 it, is it the correct time to start defining their baseline profile? I mean, we, we, we do have the RV64GC, right? And that's, that's just it. de facto the baseline for all and the distros. That's it. But isn't that enough? The problem is that GC is pretty bad in terms of just performance. It's missing the bitmanip and missing the vector. So I would propose but, whatever we call it, just add bitmanip and vector. But vector sucks, and we only have a single implementation. So it's it's way too early to pull that into any. We have, we have more than one implementation of vector. Yeah, they're do just we? all suck. <laughs> but there's more than one. <laughs> I only know about the the, the K. Yeah, the K1. The T head cores also have it, mm -hmm. right? And they have T head vector, but the new ones have vector vector. I think the C9 yeah, no. It performs a lot like the K1. But with a slightly different set of like pathologies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, some of their performance problems are the same, but I think the segmented loads are fast on one and the strided loads are fast on the other. So, like yeah. so, so uh, on, the, on the vector topic, as a distributor, I would probably disable vector because it makes things slower, yeah. right? Yeah. So I wouldn't include it in the profile requirement because Which why? Which seems reasonable. Right? And I think that's where, we, if we decided to do a profile today, I think that's where we would end up. We would end up with bitmanip because that's in stuff. GCB. Not vector because, yeah, GCB, or if they've actually decided yeah, to I define B again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They used to call it B, then they called it other stuff, and now they're calling it B again. So whatever, it doesn't matter. Right? Everybody calls it B. <laughs> right? But yeah, and that's where I would end up, right? Uh, you know, I mean, is it, do, 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 if you only have this single profile, do we need a profile? We can just make config GCC to default to that. If the configurer doesn't override it, then it's the default. Then you don't need a profile at this point. Yeah. No, I think defer, defer to in three years when you have more designs. So I think, you know, and this is where we get into kind of the weeds here, it's maybe done better on the mailing list, right? But I think uh, there are some very simple vector routines, which we can generate code that's reasonably fast for everybody, like just mem copies and, you know, stir copies and stuff, right? Maybe. <laughs> I, I, stir copy is less, stir copy is less true, yeah. I yeah. sort of the string routines. <laughs> yeah, the string routines are a sticking point, right? The, the string routines have to use um, first, yeah, first, 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 first loads, first. yeah. And then um, some of them have a read of VL. Yeah, yeah, so the string ones are a little clunkier, right? Um, but, you know, even having mem copy will buy stuff, but anyway, we can argue about which things are in there on the list. But yeah, that, that's basically what I'd say is let's go post on the lists, here's our set. And like I said, it really is a distro problem. Right? It's not useful unless it's what distros are going to use. Right. And so we need to get input from the distros. So yeah. the, the SUSOs, the canonicals, the Red Hats. That's what I think really drives what and, we do. And regardless of what we call it, it doesn't really matter. We just pick a name, and that's something we all agree that's going to be the exciting target. you know. And we're going to pay attention for cogen and performance, because there's so many options in RISC-V now that you can't really pay attention to all of them. for. Performance and correctness reasons. So yeah, you for, for the for the profiles, we have uh, the RV820, we have the RV822, RV823 is about to be ratified, or is it already? Uh, so there are already a couple of, of profiles. A and B, uh, when we say that's a distro thing, yeah, the distros can pick that. But um, if we look at ARM, ARM has also their uh, uh, ARM um, A uh, ISO definition with different uh, versions. They have uh, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 9.1, 9.2, 9.3. So I think that's reasonable that the profiles exist and that they are supported. If they are adopted by distributions, it's then up to the distributions, of course. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that's what we talked about is you know, for the profiles, let's just generate the code that targets what the profile says and then let users report bugs and close them. 
Well, that, that, that's the forcing function. That's it, right? We can make a bugzilla type for, you know, closed, please go so yell at somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you want to call it, I don't really care, as long as it's someone else's problem, right? Usually when, when these things break like this, we consider it our problem in software land, and then we stop generating that code, right? With other stuff that's gotten removed from the ISA, that's kind of what we've done, right? And, and I'll tell you that um, the higher ups in Pantana would certainly prefer to see if, 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 if the hardware is misbehaving, the aligned stuff is the, is yeah. the canonical example. Yeah. Like, who cares? In five years, these designs that, that were running on yeah. the tape are not going to matter. Yeah. So I'm not just go with it. I'm not going to in five years. No. If you do something that's gone horrifically wrong. Right? <laughs> if I put right. it on my desk in five years, I'm probably not yeah. doing risk five anymore. And if RBI wants to set the profiles as some sort of you know feature thing and the compatibility issues will sort themselves out by market forces having people not buy ones that aren't actually compatible. Cool, it'll just take a while to sort it out. Yep. But this is this is the way this is a forcing function. Yeah, that's it, right? At least now like we've got the stuff there, issues are visible, and we can just worry about it later. Right. And then if distros want to pick some sub target, like there's nothing right now that stops the distros from picking any sub target they want, right? They can write their ISO string down and they can pass, there's a dash dash with default MArch or whatever to autoconf that says, just build this and that's what you get and that'll be your default multi-lib target and everything just works. So that's all there right now. It's just a question of whether or not we write something in GCC to give it a name or we don't. It doesn't, really, it doesn't mean anything. I don't think that makes sense. Yeah, so, so if, if People think the committee designed profiles are useful. Well, then implement them, but don't add any. any yeah. don't 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 add. Yeah, I mean, don't, implementing don't add, the easy. They, they don't don't add any new profiles that you invent right now because you don't have any designs that people want to use anyway. Yeah, which is well. That's why we've deferred it for so long. <laughs> yeah, and maybe the answer is just wait. Longer. Deferred another year. Yeah. I mean, I, I can live with that. I think what the only reason this is being pushed right now is because LLVM has it now. Yeah, yeah. But that's the profile side of things, which will just do the same thing LLVM does and tell users to report the bug somewhere else, which is, I'm totally fine with that. I mean, I, like, I, I would be happy to not have to paper over all these ISO problems in software. It's a pain. So just stop doing it. Have we killed this one for today? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so, so you'll make the change and, and evangelize it, right? Yeah, sure. It got posted. <laughs> I will. I will close all of the bugs as e go away or whatever it is. <laughs> Do we have a bugzilla for? You're taking the arrows. <laughs> yeah. I will either way, so it doesn't really matter who closes them. <laughs> well, we have any more slides, Keto? One more. One more. Oh wait, just just please one kind of. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of update. It's not really related to the GCC development itself, but it's kind of uh, another script build. It's a uh, script for build a recycling toolchain, which used in the recycle community for a while. And we are still uh, supporting the latest, latest uh, GCC release it, I mean, GC13, and we are trying to upgrade that, and we are very close to merge, and not sure if anyone has used it, and hope for this will be useful to you, since this provides you some uh, preview image, and also a very easy script to build a, a recycled tool chain, since you may know, uh, build and use the tool chain is very hard, I mean, yeah. And, and, and doesn't this tool chain, it builds Kimu, it builds, it uses, it, it's the whole ball of wax. So if you're trying to get started, this is the easy way to get started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and some is topic, I'm not sure who it is. Yeah, I think I wrote most of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I started dropping stuff in. It might have been in, when I was in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, so... so the, yeah, the uh, the hardware probe work is IGLIPC now. Um, within Ventana, we have wired up uh, the V-Rule work that was done for us a while back uh, into that hardware probe mechanism. We've also taken the work from uh, uh, engineers at Revos with the vectors implementation. We've got those in archery. So we'll, we'll get those upstream in the fairly near future. Um, it's not the top of my list, but it's on me. So blind me when it doesn't go in. Um, and it works. 
Yeah. Our LLVM guys can figure out how to actually call the hardware for the function. But yeah, <laughs> I've actually run it on hardware. <laughs> and by the way, we had something I'm not even thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> and not only did it work, it found bugs. <laughs> the, the nice thing is, so once you wire all this up in glibc, the, um, the glibc test suite will actually query itself for how, what implementations you have. And so say, oh, you have an a unaligned mem copy, you have an RVV mem copy, you have a mem copy with unaligned loads and stores, and it'll just test them all. And it found real bugs. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, this is something I've added as well. Vector register access to GB. Um, if you're using one of these banana pies, do not upgrade from the V1 software because the V2 software does not give you access to any of the vector registers in the debugger. Um, it's a pain in the rear, and I don't know why. It looks like there's at least a GDB bug and at least a kernel bug in there. Um, I'm not currently chasing it right now. Um, as far as I know, there is no hardware watch point support in GDB yet, which would have been really nice to have about a week ago. But, <laughs> oh well. Um, and then, yeah, I, I figured it's mostly going to be kernel side work. I mean, I've done this kind of stuff in the past. In this case, we also need something below the kernel because the watch points start out in debug mode. And something needs to say that you can defer them to supervisor mode. And that's what we got stuff on last. Yeah, time. I'm sure we'll figure it out. I mean, this I is not. Just curious, does here some some developer for Resurfy are working on the GDB part? I don't have anybody right now. <laughs> okay. I was going to have to do it myself until Robin pointed out that it worked on the V1 BPI. Um, the, the reason mine runs V2 is because of the hardware probe stuff. I need uh -huh. a newer kernel. <laughs> Curious, why, 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 why we won't work by V2 now work? Is all upstream one or their own release? I think they have their own branch. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I, I was able to take the, the, the GDB from the BPI V1, uh -huh. try to run that GDB on the V2 software stack, which has a different <laughs> kernel, and it says, I'm supposed to be able to get hardware registers, but I can't read them. So pieces okay. of it are in there. It's, it's a mess. Um, and then Valgrind, I think, is still a, uh, a significant gap. I don't think any work has happened in terms of getting that upstream. I, I, oh. Yeah, I also think has some work. Maybe somebody has uh, Yeah, I, I know a, a guy from Intel. Uh, he is doing the very grand support for RISC file port. Uh, his name is uh, Hai Chen. Uh, yeah. So you, you can. Uh, connect, uh, connect to uh, Jeff, Jeff Shell to get uh, his work info about uh, the Valley Grant. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you know if they've had any success getting review from Mark and the rest of the Valgrind team? Because that was really the whole, the, the key work is done, but we haven't been able to get the review side. Uh, yeah, I, I remember they started that work uh, uh, half a year ago. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think they to make some progress here, yeah. Yeah, I don't, but I, I don't know the actual. He's here somewhere. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, he's here somewhere. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to look for Marbleyard because he is the guy and he's not in this room. So I assume he's downstairs right now. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Uh, it, it is still an issue. I, I think we are downstairs. I think yeah. I think we're downstairs. Right. Yeah. Oh, are we downstairs next year? No, no, I think we're downstairs now. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Mark is upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very little sleep here, guys. I mean, sure, maybe Mark is really downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Just one of the best things. <laughs> okay, no more slides, so anything, anything would like to rise? Okay, Joey. So you went very fast through the, the, the previous slide, the RISC V GNU toolchain. Um, could you, what's the status of uh, Linux multi-willib support? Okay, this Linux multi-willib support is there. You, you may know it's there for support for, the, for configure, that, but it's unlike the bare metal multi-willib you can configure by yourself you, is in the fixed state. You, you, you can have two each of 64 and 32 bit, yeah. so long as they've got different ABIs. What I can't have is a multi-lib of a non-vector and a vector library. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that, that will really my life, hell, I'm, I'm not sure if, yeah. Trey, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure yeah, if, yeah, Trey, yeah. are you actually working on that? No, I'm just doing that. <laughs> yeah. 
But I also curious the how we extend the data mechanism. I mean, we are selected that by the ABI before, so I was thinking we may need to extend in that yeah. to support such scenario. Otherwise, I know we stuck there for a while since that block people to add more multi lib to testing or do some concrete work. Yeah, yeah, I think we just need another folder for the target. The hardware type stuff should do it. Yeah, right? I would think so. Hardware is the way to go, Jill. Hey. I think our GLC hardware caps is the way to do this. If it's in a, if it's in a library, HW caps are a great way to do this. Hey, wait, 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 no, wait, no, one, one strange question from me. Who is really responsible for the recent 5G review? I'll review stuff for any of the other maintainers. Uh huh, okay. I mean, it's, it's no different than anything else. There are a bunch of us. Yeah. But four minutes. Okay. Oh, wow. I did not think we were going to fill the whole oh. thing. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. If stuff's not getting reviewed, then I don't know. So they call you for GLC. Yeah. yeah, and you know, Keto. Yeah, I think you should have to post it. Uh, Palmer, myself. Okay. It's the same as getting any other code for GLC. <laughs> I think I am a reviewer for GLC. Carlos, are you in there anywhere? That's a you are. I, 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 we'll work with that assumption. I'll, I'll say to Carlos, but I, I think I can review code for GLC. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Um, so I have a question. We have um, many, many extensions in RISC-V now, and I can't keep track of all of them and whether they're supported and how complete the support is. Um, so I wonder, is there... So the motivation for this is I often get, get asked by a customer, uh, is X supported in GCC version, whatever? So I end up looking through release notes and commit histories and things like this and looking in the, uh, in the source files. I wonder, is there somewhere better I should be looking? Or do we want something like LLVM has? They've got a RISC-V usage document, and that lists all of the extensions and uh, whether they have assembly support or code gen support. Did um, we merge that table? I think there's a document. Yeah, MIT has a document that lists all the dash dash print. Supported it. Uh, in, so that tells you GCC there is an arc equal help. It's a simple way. So that will give yeah. you the list of extensions. Yeah, it merge it though, right? Yeah, 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 already. Which yeah, we, we have that for the architecture, for the tuning, for the yeah. Yeah, 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 more, yeah. more. It's yeah. same interface. So, so that will give you the list of extensions. But does it, but does it tell you whether it's a complete implementation? Whether there's code gen for all the instructions? Whether it's halfway there? Oh. <laughs> I know that's not necessarily an easy thing to answer, but yeah, someone it's must know. It's always improving. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you turn it on, you should get some instructions out. If you don't have a history. That's yeah. Like how many you get out is kind of, I don't know. So, so usually the question is, uh, that I get is along the lines of how good is it or how complete is it? So that's, in the, at the Bindi tools level, that's, can I assemble all of it? But yeah. Obviously, if the code gen. Easy. If it's in there, it's complete, unless there's some bug we don't know. Yeah, right? yeah. Just list them. That, that's the easy, right. easy one to answer. GCC is kind of what, like, what does it even mean? Well, we know an answer, right? so, it, so that's the wrong question, but it, it's what is the status? There must be a way to well, answer that. They, I would say if the extension is supported, it's supported right now. How many instructions actually get out depends, you know, on. It, it's much more complicated, right? Mm. When Zcon was initially added, we were only generating fewer Zcons, right? Like those instructions, but then over time that improved. But if, if the compiler says I'm supporting Zcon, you can, it is support, right? From a technical standpoint. Yeah. Not just from a technical standpoint. If you have a code, sec a code fragment that you think should use Zcon, and it's not. Then yeah, so I, I think that, yeah, then it's a so complete isn't necessarily the right question. It's how good do we think it is? Or should I expect code gen? And if I don't, is it a bug? Well, yeah, and that's pretty good. It's it's useful. What set do we do for distros type stuff? Because really the only thing that's going to be decent quality is the stuff that somebody cares about. And that means either some embedded vendor is shipping that thing and working on it, or distro people are shipping that thing and care. So right now, if it's not in GC, yeah, it's a lower quality bar than everything else. That makes sense. 
And you want greater than that, you would just talk about CRI time, yeah. the CB set. Cool, thank you. I would have to spin any of that new stuff as a bunch of best optimization code that just needs to be filed. Right. Right, we're talking about vector being photo pens, right? So. Okay. And I think it ties up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone.